Good morning and welcome to St. Charles. Thank you for being here for this celebration of the life of Jean Fred Cipriano. Presiding at this Mass is Cardinal Roger Mahoney. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My friends, welcome. We gather to offer prayer and fond memories of a great, great person in our community and in your families. Jean Cipriano was a legend in the music industry, especially across all the media. Welcome his wife and family and all who are here, especially those who have collaborated with him in many decades in the music industry, in film and television and other media. We welcome also those who are joining us in prayer via live stream. You are most welcome to offer your prayer together with ours. In baptism, in the waters of baptism, Jean died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And now we have the placement of the albus, uh, the uh, Paul's already here. So as a symbol of his being born again with Christ Jesus and the white be uh, gives us a, a glimpse into the light and glory of eternal life. So in that spirit, he's clothed with a white garment as he was at his baptism. So now we continue with our mess. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the ending of present things opened up the beginning of things to come, grant that the soul of your servant Jean may be led by you to attain the inheritance of eternal redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Jeannie Bell to come forward, who is going to give us our words of reflection this morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeannie, and I'm Sip's oldest child. On behalf of my brothers, Fred and Paul, my sister, Suzanne, Grandchildren, Grant, Alicia, and Maggie. Great-grands, Natalie and Emily. My husband, Phil, and Dad's longtime companion, Kat. We'd like to thank you for joining us today to honor our Dad and Papa. It's impossible to only say a few words about Jean Cipriano, better known as Sip, because he was truly beloved by all who knew him 
and greatly admired for his talent and craft. He would credit his love of music to his father, who taught him to play the clarinet, and would not let him go outside to play kick the can when friends knocked on the door, because he had to practice. He would go on to teach himself to play multiple woodwind instruments and seek out the best teachers. Knowing he wanted to work in the recording industry, Dad chose to move to California from New Haven, Connecticut, after he and Mom were married. He became a student of his craft, and clearly that was the reason he was so sought after for movies, TV, recording sessions, and jingles. Our home was always filled with music. Um, as Dad practiced his scales, made his own reeds, and tested new reeds and instruments. He was very humble about his talent, so much so that as a young boy, when he played his first clarinet recital, he played it with his back to the audience. <laughs> Dad never sought out accolades during his illustrious career, a quality that can be very rare in the entertainment industry. He remained true to himself and grounded. That quality of Dad's brought to mind a Bible verse that describes his character in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not human masters. Although Dad is best known for his music career among his peers, he was known in our family as the best dad and papa. Family meant everything to him, and nothing made him happier than having his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren seated around the dining room table, enjoying the lunch of Italian cold cuts sandwiches. Afterwards, we'd spend the day in the pool, and Dad loved these happy family times. He could be silly, he'd make up his own words, and people actually knew what they meant. <laughs> he never took himself too serious, and he loved to tease. He was the only parent who would come out on the street and throw the football with us, and all the neighborhood kids loved him. You could always hear, hi, Mr. Sip. Maybe Dad was making up for lost time for not being able to play kick the can with his friends. <laughs> Dad was a great storyteller, and many of his nighttime nightclub gigs with Cat were woven with fun stories of his career, always prefaced with, true story. <laughs> Dad enjoyed simple things like going out to dinner with friends and family, having lunch at the famous Langer's Deli with his musician friends and sharing stories reading the paper on the back porch in his favorite chair, or catching a ball game on TV. He was a true Yankees fan. He was happy to wake up and see the ceiling, and he loved telling us how many more days till Christmas. And by the way, Dad, it's five more days. Sip lived a charmed life, never took that lightly. He lived his purpose, and he used his gift and talents to the very best of his ability. A friend of mine loved to say that she wanted to slide into heaven like sliding into home plate, all used up serving God. And Dad did just that with his amazing talent. A legend has entered heaven. And I'll leave you with one final thought. When you think fondly of Sip, be sure and give a yo. Thank you. I would like to now invite Alicia Bell for our first reading.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel passage, which you have chosen for today's Mass, is also one of my favorites. This passage occurs shortly before Jesus will be arrested and crucified and rise from the dead. And he is alerting his disciples who are with him, it is important that I go, because in my Father's house there are many dwellings, and I must go open the doors to the kingdom of heaven and make sure there's a place prepared for you. And then I will come back and I will take you with me into the kingdom. In this way, Jesus sums up really his mission to come from the Father, to pronounce an era of peace with compassion and mercy for all, and to open again the gates of heaven for all of us. It is such a comforting, astounding prediction he makes for us. And so, through our baptism especially, we share in that life of Jesus, and we look forward to going with him into the kingdom. You know, some will say, you know, it's very difficult having a funeral around Christmas time. But actually, it's a wonderful time when we understand where Jean has gone. And if he had the chance right now, Jean, do you want to stay there? Do you want to come back here? He would say, I'm staying here. Because that is the kingdom of heaven and all that he loved through music abounds in the kingdom of heaven. And on Christmas, the wonderful news given to the shepherds. Remember the shepherds are out in the hills and the angels come and they uh, announce to them, behold, we bring you glad tidings of great joy. A savior has born. And Luke tells us, and there were multiple choirs of angels singing. Music accompanied Jesus into the world. And so it's so fitting today Imagine the music that Jean will be enjoying in the kingdom of heaven, one that I long to be part of. And I'm not too much younger than Jean, so it probably won't be too long before I'll be able to do that. But I look forward to the fact that we have a place in the kingdom of heaven just for us. Each and every one of us created it differently and individually. And God loves you, he loves each of us in that way and has prepared a place for us. And Jesus says to Thomas, who says, how do we get there? And Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, the truth, and the light. And so that is our way forward. In our first scripture today, the letter of St. Uh, St. Paul to the Corinthians, he uses an image which I, which I just love. 
You may not recall, but uh, Paul, as a tradesman, made tents. In that part of the world, there were a lot of nomads, so tent making was a big, big field to be in. And he was a tent maker. And so he often, in his letters, uses the image of a tent for different reasons. And then today, he's talking about life eternal, and the way he describes death is this. We have been on this earth living in a temporary house, a tent. And at the end of our life, we fold our temporary tent and go on to the kingdom for a permanent dwelling. I've always loved that image he gives us, that our life here is like a tent. Tents are not permanent. They are temporary. But our eyes are called to focus on what is permanent, and that is our life with God forever in the kingdom of heaven. And so our call today is to give thanks to God for someone we know and have particularly enjoyed music over the decades, someone who has enlivened so many actions on screen and television and other performances, somebody who's been a part of bringing joy and peace uh, to our world through medium of music. And so we too are joining today in that, that eternal song in which we our hearts raise up today, that song of longing, lifting up my soul, as the responsorial psalm said, lifting up our souls today in gratitude to God for our lives and the life of this genius of a musician, Gene. And we, we pray that we will continue our own journeys because one of these days for each one of us, we take the tent poles down, fold up our tent, and move on to something permanent. And the way we get there and the way we know we will find that permanent dwelling is to follow Jesus who told us, if you want to know the way, I am the way and the truth and the life. Whoever believes and follows me shall have eternal life with them. And we now offer our prayer, our gifts of bread and wine upon the altar. As we offer our gifts today, wine and bread, I invite you to offer and place here with our gifts your own intentions, your own needs, your own longings, and those people for whom you wish to pray for today in a special way. Let us place them here so that God hears them in a special way.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Gino, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. As we now prepare to offer our Eucharistic prayer, I'd like to invite members of our Catholic community to kneel, all others may be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Gino, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Charles Borromeo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Let us now pray to our Father in those words Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another some sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. Shortly, we'll be offering Holy Communion. We invite our members of our Catholic community to come forward for Holy Communion. 
Others who wish to receive a blessing are also welcome to come forward. Just simply indicate like that and we will know you're there for a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that your servant Gino, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now have our prayers of final commendation. We ask you to remain standing. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Gino. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And now we surround his body with incense as a sign of our prayer rising up for him, and we place holy water upon him, recalling his baptism and his life in Jesus. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Gino in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Gino and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. to her now. Give 
the cross to one of you to take home with the family in loving remembrance of his great life. And now.